I am going to demonstrate to you some amazing minimally invasive technology for the treatment of PARS defects in the lumbar spine. But first of all, I'd like to be certain you understand what pathology is involved. The lower back or lumbar spine is composed of five vertebral bodies. Each of these bones gives off two processes that go up and two processes that go down. Each bone is separated from the other bone by a disc, and at each level a nerve is given off, all of which join in the buttock to form a larger nerve known as the sciatic nerve. If the two processes going down break, that's called a pars defect. With a pars defect, that can allow one bone to slip on the other bone. That is called a spondylolisthesis. The best way to evaluate a pars defect is with a special x-ray known as a CT scan. 80% of these occur at L5, 15% occur at L4, and the remainder are scattered throughout the spine. Pain comes from the fracture itself. As it moves, it can cause pain. As it tries to heal, it can develop a callus and fibrous tissue that can pinch the sciatic nerve, causing pain in the back, buttock, and down the leg. Also, if one bone slips on the other one, that can pinch the L5 nerve, and that can cause back, buttock, and leg pain as well. So with a PARS defect, you can have back pain from the fracture, and you can also have sciatica. If L5 slips enough, you can damage not only the L5-S1 disc, but also the L4-5 disc, and you may need surgery at both levels. We use a minimally invasive technique initially under fluoroscopic guidance and spinal cord monitoring an incision is made of about one centimeter the rod is passed down into the abdomen and we find where the bones are locked or interdigitated together initially using that rod kind of like a crowbar we open up or disimpact the bones through that rod, we can, put it, we can use a tube to clean the residual disc, make sure the nerves are unpinched. We then deploy an airbag type mesh bag, which we fill with a mixture of bank bone and stem cells. As we fill it, it restores the normal height and alignment to the spine. Once the bag is full, the bone consolidates and it is actually stiffer than a regular cage. It can be done as an outpatient or an overnight stay. These are some examples from our Instagram account. You can see how large the cage is and how well the reduction is. Many times we will place some screws through a minimally invasive second incision to make sure that we can get adequate alignment. And you can see the incisions are about the size of the tip of my finger. The problem with typical posterior surgery is the fact that you must move the nerves aside from behind to place the cage and that limits significantly the size of the cage that you can use. We don't have that limitation using our minimally invasive technique. We can place as large a cage as we need to and as much bone as we need to. With the anterior technique you can place a very large cage you can get good spinal alignment, but you cannot decompress the nerves as well. Thank you very much for watching this video. Tell your friends and neighbors to watch. If you have any questions, write me at drsmithelpasospinecenter.com. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks.